Dan, Dan Klimo from uh, Sugar Creative in Cardiff. And we are a digital creative agency. We create apps, mobile games, websites, branding as well, a bit of everything, a bit of video. And um, I'm going to talk to you today about one particular app that we've done for a tourism destination. Um, and that is for Dana Rogov. All of these slides don't have any um, text on them, by the way. So uh, they're designed to make you look at me, unfortunately. Sorry about that. But they're nice, pretty pictures, so you get some, uh, something to look at. Um, Dan Rogov, obviously, um, if you're not aware, it's in the Brecon Beacons. Fantastic scenery, but um, comes with its limitations when we're talking about digital interpretation. Uh, very, very limited and very slow Wi-Fi up there. Um, good luck getting a mobile phone signal. I couldn't get anything at all. So when it comes to creating an app, um, it had its own challenges. And so we wanted to make sure that everything was kept inside the app. If you got a glimpse, or a little hint of Wi-Fi, fantastic. There's one thing you could do on there, but it wasn't going to spoil your experience at all. Um, up at Danarogov, they have fantastic cave formations. And so we wanted to try and exploit that, really, and let people know that these things are there to look at. And they've got three caves up there, um, each with varying formations. They have uh, visitor centers, a museum, uh, Shire Horse Center, lots of things to do for the family, and it's a great day out. So, this is our challenge. They're not short of visitors. Um, people come in all the time. They have a massive amount of school trips. So this wasn't designed to get people necessarily into Danarogov. It was designed to make them stay a little bit longer than they would, normally would have uh, at the destination, because um, currently, uh, well, not currently, but not anymore, but previously, you get handed a map, printed map, and say, off you go, just explore, do whatever you want to. Um, and I went up there as sort of a blind visitor, didn't want to um, let them know I was there. I got handed a map. The first thing I do, fold it up and put it in the pocket. And I'm sure I'll use it later. I didn't get out at all. And I knew I was going there to try and get the best out of this experience. So I'm not the only one that does that. Um, but I'm there with my mobile phone all the time. And I'm checking, even though there's no signal, there's no chance of me getting a signal. Have I got any tweets? Oh, oh yeah, there's no signal. Uh, wandering around, oh, I'll take a picture of that. I'll upload it straight away. Oh, I can't. OK, fine, there's no signal. So we wanted to make sure that whatever we did, um, again, didn't matter on signal, but was going to enhance experience. Not that you would wander around. It's for the tablet, first of all. Not that you wander around like this and miss everything. But it's something that you could refer to time and time again because it's on a medium that you want to interact with. Um, and I'll show you later on. I've got a, a live demo. That's why I want my glamorous assistant back later on to, to show you one of the things. Um, also important that because it's in the heart of Wales, um, we had an opportunity to put it uh, in Welsh um, as well as English. Um, but we were after an experience where people um, had wanted to do this at the end. They wanted to go, wow, had a fantastic experience, really enjoyed it. I was able to use a new smart device whilst I was there um, and just left with a sense of awe about the place. Now, that's not something you would get um, by looking, by just wandering around like this. Um, not something you get by just looking at the map. But if you've been told where to go, where the best things are, that's the best place. You can experience for yourself, get your own um, interpretation of it, talk about it with your friends, and you're left with an experience, hopefully, that's the idea, that's like this. So, the challenge. People arrive at Danarogov, not necessarily jumping in the air, but they arrive excited about the day out. At least they hope they do, otherwise, maybe why, why'd they go? Um, we want to try and keep that enthusiasm up straight, um, all the way along their trip. Now, obviously, they're going to stop off for toilet and have something to eat. Um, we need to tell people where these things are. We need to tell them what's next. Um, so that at the end of the day, they go home and they're satisfied. We don't want that at the start of the day, basically. Um, so some features we uh, put in, just before I actually give you a demo. Um, there are audio tours on there. Um, unfortunately, they couldn't have um, tour guides anymore, just as impractical. So here's a chance to actually plug in if you wanted to, or just use the device's um, speaker. 
to go around the caves, have an audio tour, a personal tour, um, about each formation, not quite each formation, but the significant ones. Um, there are little panels in there that say, this is the so-called um, angel. That's one of them. It's got like sort of wing formations. But that's all you get. You just say, this is the angel. Thank you very much, and walk on. So we want to say, well, how is it made? Uh, any interesting stories? And on that one in particular, uh, there's a formation just nearby where when the caves were being used uh, during the war to store artifacts and documents, um, when they were clearing all out again after the war, a soldier took his rifle, snapped a piece off, and took it home as a little souvenir. Because you'll see a, a stalag tight, thank you, a uh, stalag tight that's got a sharp end on it. Um, and there's little stories there, but you just wouldn't get, obviously, just by wandering around and thinking, well, that's very nice, but what do I know about that from walking in and walking out? Um, <coughs> There's a few features there that we want people to have this reaction to. It's just, what on earth am I seeing? Andrew described it as, um, or you told me, one person described it as witchcraft. Uh, so I'll show you what that is uh, in, in a second. Um, but we really wanted to have a rich experience. Um, there's no better way than just to, I should just try and give you a, a live demonstration. So it's the Danarogov Adventure app, if you can see it there. There you go, it's coming up. There we are. I see that thing disappeared. It's detecting whether I've got a Wi-Fi connection or not. Now, this app, we want people to engage with it before they come. Um, so there's enough information there to gather how'd you get there, what am I going to do when I'm there. But there's also things you can't interact with unless you're actually there. And that's the whole point of this. So they have two events throughout the year, as far as I'm aware. It's Christmas and Halloween. So they're constantly advertised. But if you had a Wi-Fi connection at home, um, we have an opportunity there to overwrite those two ads, you can see uh, just on the right-hand side, with um, tutorials about how to use the app, you know, what, how to get the best out of the app. Um, so if I look at the general information there, we've got a bit of text if you want to read it. Again, it's not essential that you do, but if you're planning a trip, maybe that's the point you actually want to sit down and uh, find out some information. Some FAQs, how to find us. Um, something about disability access as well, important, not the sort of thing you perhaps want to find out when you're there, find out beforehand. Some pictures you can click on, come up large. Um, they have a load of dinosaurs up there. Not that dinosaurs were actually there, <laughs> but they've got, uh, not that they're real either, um, but they do have uh, fiberglass dinosaurs hidden around the place. And we thought, well, okay, it's fantastic for kids. Is there a way also we can maybe make them come to life a little bit? And that's what I want my glamorous assistant for a little bit later on. So this is the main navigation for the app. It's a map of the area. It's probably about half a mile, three quarters of a mile stretch, something like that. Um, Self-contained, so we're not talking about Bridge End, County Borough Council, uh, County Borough. We're talking about a small area. So people are already there, they're self-contained, they've parked. Now what's the, what is there to do? Uh, and as you can see, all these little um, signposts here, we can turn off the boring ones and just concentrate on the features. So you can see these question marks are there. They're there, all related to one particular feature. The little red uh, stars are related to one particular feature. And there's audio tours, and there's also a time wheel. And we'll just go through them uh, one by one, just to show the signposts. They are um, things like picnic area. It's a picnic area. You can have your food there. Some things just a little bit less exciting than the main bits. Toilets, obviously, where you get uh, first aid from, things like that. Now, as you can see, it, it, is, it is spread out. And what, people, what they were finding was people would go to the main bit, get back to their car, and drive off again. They wouldn't go down to the bits uh, down the bottom right-hand corner. But there's some fantastic bits down there. And we wanted to find a way to give people incentive to go down there. So we actually put... Um, I'm going to talk about the treasure hunt thing, first of all. Uh, a clue in the Shirehorse Centre, hidden away, so that there was an incentive to actually go down there and visit it. If you're already invested in the, the treasure hunt, there's five clues to find. The last place to go will be down to the, the Shirehorse Centre, and then you've had the full experience. Um, so in the treasure hunt, um, it's based on a sort of enigma code machine. 
a tap to start. So these are little pressure things and volts going up and down. The idea being there that, um, again, I told you that the caves were used during the war, and so we try, that's our loose link to get the Enigma machine uh, in there. Uh, you put in the first letter of your name, I'm not going to go through all of it, so I'm down, so I'm going to put in D. So it does a little encoding for me. And once it's uh, encoded what it's going to do from there on, my D gets turned into a W. And that's the process of how, how it's going to go along. So then I go around the site and I find clues one to five don't have to be in order. I can choose whichever one I want to. So if I look at up at a tree somewhere, uh, we tell you where the clues are roughly, so it's not treasure hunt throughout the high, entire site. Um, yeah, I tell you where the clues are and I find a, a D or something or an E. I can't actually remember what the clues, <laughs> which the clues are, so I'll, I'll just guess for now. I actually think the first one is H, so let's go for that. Try. If I see an H up there, I'm going to press it, and it's going to see whether I actually got it right. There we are. OK. So it's encoded into something that's not what I saw. The idea of that is so that people don't cheat and look over your shoulder, and they see a W, and they go, oh, the first clue is W. Thank you very much. I'll just follow that person around. It's meant to be encoded, um, and if you get, get all five clues all the way around the site, it then reveals a master word, which then unlocks um, a little prize for kids. You could, you could redeem at the shop, or like a two-for-one sandwich deal or something like that in the, the cafeteria. But it means they've done a little bit of work uh, to get there, and also then they're rewarded with something they can eat or something they can take away. Um, all designed to get people to explore the entire site. If I return to the map, now you can see the other points on the map where that um, the clue symbol appears. Um, just talking about the stalactites, the stalagmites. Oh, yeah, thanks, Andrew, you were, you were right. A um, little bit of education about how they're formed. And we wanted to get across that these things have been growing for thousands of years. So we have this little time wheel here, about saying 20,000 years ago. And as you turn it, the stalactite and stalagmite grow from the ceiling and from the floor. Passages of time um, appear. So you've got things, I don't know if you can see them there. It says like 10,000 years ago, um, the end of the Ice Age in Britain. Um, 1 AD, the Gregorian calendar system is implemented. 43 AD, Romans begin conquest of Britain. And all of these events are packed really, really tightly together because um, it's the last maybe 2,000 years. In 2,000 years, this stalactite may have grown about that much or something. But in 10,000 years, it's grown this much. It's just an idea to get across um, how much it's grown in this, the length of time and how much has happened in the short uh, growth it's had. If we go back to the map, there's audio tours you can listen to. So this is for one particular one for the actual cave down Rogov itself. The idea with this one, you find um, the formation based on the picture and then you listen to an audio tour about it. It's going to be, it's going to be about 60 seconds, maybe not even that. Uh, again, what Andrew was saying about bite-sized information, you don't even have to read it. What you have to do is just listen to someone talking about, it's actually one of the tour guys that used to be um, doing tours around there, so he's very enthusiastic about it. Um, it doesn't stop you um, interacting with the rest of the app. You can see this little um, feature at the bottom, the play button, the back button. You can then play something, quit out of it, still listen to the audio tour that's going on, and interact with the rest of the app. There's, I think there's nine tours overall that take you all the way into the cave and all the way back out again as well. It's what you, it's the closest thing you would have had to a, someone walking around with you telling you everything. I went around with the owner, and I probably had the best tour anyone's ever had, because he knows everything about it. But if you went there as a visitor, there's no one to tell you anything. Um, you can read about it from the information sheets, but that's all you're going to get. So this is a substitute for a tour guide. And then um, one of the other features, which I need my glamorous assistant for, is uh, you've heard it said already about augmented reality. Um, we've got three augmented reality features at Dan Rogov. Um, I just have to say, actually, this was all done on a set budget. So the amount of features we put in and what we could do for the budget. And the way we designed it, that's its map-based navigation, we could actually add more points if more funds become available and they want to develop it even further. 
So this one, I need to see if I can entangle this a sec. Uh, through there. There you go. Is anyone not being done? Yeah, yeah. There's a good app. You should get that before you go. <laughs> <laughs> So, as you can see, this um, yellow sign, that yellow sign is a five meter long and 2.5 meter tall billboard. So, maybe actually as high as this screen here, by about five meters long. And I've got a small version of it here, as much as I could fit on my A3 printer. So, you can just prop that up for me, Andrew. I don't know if you can see that now. Yeah. Yep, that's fine, yeah. So, all I do is click into go to special feature. We're using Mateo, uh, another augmented reality platform. The camera view comes up. Maybe I can see everybody. Hello. And what happens is, um, if I just bring it a little bit closer, because it's the size of it, that's all. When I show the iPad to the um, display, it's going to make it flat there. You should see an augmented reality T Rex who's burst through. I'll turn it if there's any volume on it. There is volume on it. Oh, it the wrong way. There we are. Can you hear that? Yeah. So the idea of that, thanks, Andrew, um, was to obviously create a sense of awe. Now that thing, that's that T-Rex's head, uh, again, is probably from floor to ceiling. So imagine that, just seeing that in front of you. We've actually marked a little point on the floor where you can stand and say to your friend, just go and stand there a second, and you walk back a few steps. The T-Rex will actually seemingly snap down on the person, and you could take a picture at that point as well if you wanted to. It's based on the, um, the shark in Back to the Future 2 that bursts through the billboard and almost eats Marty McFly. Um, it's those sort of things that when people see it, they're... First of all, there's a crowd around the person who's holding the iPad, which creates a sense of um, interest. You know, where, what on earth is this? And that's the witchcraft bit um, that Andrew mentioned as well. And uh, people just can't believe it. I mean, it's, I'm working with this sort of stuff every day. I, I know what it can do. I know it's not really there. Um, but people are looking behind <laughs> their device as well. Um, now, just to talk about the development of this, this app has been out there probably th two or three months, maybe, something like that. Um, there's now an iPhone version in development already. Um, the owner uh, has had a fantastic response from it, so we've commissioned an iPhone version. It only exists in iOS at the moment. Um, it's not limited to iOS. It could be done on Android platform as well. Um, a lot of the resources can be ported over. Um, we wanted to make sure, though, that we weren't using anything that's specific to iOS. It could be used, uh, especially all the graphics. That's why it's all graphic-led. It's not using any of the standard layouts at all. Um, anything else to say on that one? Um, I had a few notes as well. I can just pull them up. But I'm happy to answer any questions as well if people had. Um, no, I think, I think that's it. I've shown you everything I wanted to show you. Um, obviously, it is targeted to one specific um, destination. We're not trying to cover a massive area here but we're trying to make sure that people get the best out of the experience um, on their day. And so it's used as a tool more than anything else. We're not expecting people to put their heads down and just look at this all day. There's not enough to do for that. We want them to refer to it throughout the day, find out the information they want, find, go off and find it. Um, because the destination itself is, is fantastic, and that's what we want people to realize. This is just a, a pointer and a substitute for someone walking around, holding your hand, telling you the best bits. Thank <laughs> you.